I'm going to Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we have an update to Godot Game Engine. Godot 3.5 Beta 3 was just released with a number of new features, but probably the one you least expected is that the Godot Editor now runs on Android. And we're going to start off with a demonstration right away. I'm doing a voiceover after the fact. This is my actual Samsung S21 phone. It's an S21 Ultra, so it is a big screen. I got to admit, it is a little bit hard to read at this point in time, but this is um, the Godot Editor running on my Android device actually screen recorded directly off my device uh, I'm gonna start by creating just a templated application so we're gonna go ahead and use the piano one it makes for a decent demonstration but here you can see scrolling in action now if you're going to develop on an Android device you're really going to want to hook up a mouse and keyboard trust me the on-screen keyboard gets in the way all the time as you're gonna see right here I can't see what I'm typing because the keyboard is in the way whereas if you're using a physical keyboard this would not be an issue also you're going to find with your mouse the screen is pretty tiny and high my DPI settings didn't seem to work for me when I changed them. Uh, so trying to, to click things with your fat finger, not the easiest thing in the world. But here you see, I can actually grab, drag, and drop in the editor works just fine. On top of that, you do have full access to the code editor. As you can see, when you go into a text field, such as the code editor, it automatically pops up the keyboard. There I am trying to scroll. And again, I clicked inside the text field, so the keyboard popped up in my face. You really are going to want to use a mouse and keyboard. As you can see, though, you can drag select. Uh, and we'll go ahead and uh, run this application so you can actually see you can develop, test, and run entirely on an Android device. Um, so here we see, play some piano and go. And yeah, as you see, uh, touch works. Multi-touch did not work in this case. I think that's something that would need to be explicitly coded for. I don't know if it is a, a side effect of this port or in general. But yeah, Godot is now on Android. Of course, this whole Android update is part of a bigger update. This is the Godot 3.5 Beta 3 release, uh, which just released yesterday. And again, uh, the Android part was definitely part of it, but there's more to this release than just Android. By the way, if you're thinking, well, why are you wasting development time on something like this? They're not. This is someone else's project. It would have been done uh, regardless. This isn't taking effort from the core team. This is just other people in the community that added this support. So you see here, uh, they're getting closer, closer to the 3.5 stable release. Um, trying to release 3.5 beta builds every other week to ensure new features can be tested. The new beta 3 adds too much awaited uh, changes for Android users, an initial Android editor port, which we just saw in action, any fix for low processor usage mode, which used to flicker on Android. Uh, so that's coming up down below, but we got some other changes coming in 3.5 as well. Uh, we have a synchronous shader compilation and caching, this Uber shader. Uh, so this was announced in a while back. I, I know I discussed this in the past, but basically uh, it's uh, a shader stand-in or almost like a polyfill so that shaders don't uh, have any issues on load. Um, so the new system uses an Uber shader, a big shader supporting all features, slow but compiled on startup to fill in all the shaders initially while the more efficient and material-specific shaders get compiled asynchronous and then cache for future runs. It means that on the first run, materials will look a bit different for a second or two, but there should no longer be compilation lag. Uh, test it thoroughly, let them know how it goes. They also added navigation server with obstacle avoidance using RVO2. Um, so this is a back port from Godot 4. Oh, that might be it. The Uber shader might be from Godot 4 and a back port as well. I know I covered it in the past for sure. Um, so this is a, a change to the navigation server, which is used for pathfinding uh, for your game through 3D scenes. Uh, this is add supports for obstacle avoidance using the RVO2 library and navigation messages can now be baked at runtime. Uh, so that's definitely nice. Pack port was done while attempting to preserve API compatibility within reason, but the underlying behavior will change mainly to provide a lot more features and flexibility. We expect that all users will be happy to move to the new navigation server, uh, but please report issues if you have them. Uh, and then physics interpolation 3D. Uh, while physics run at a fixed tick rate, uh, frames can actually display at a wide variety of frame rates depending on the player's hardware. This can lead to problems when the movement of objects does not line up with the rendered frames, giving it an unsightly, unsightly jitter. Uh, so this one, thanks to Longelly, uh, you will now find a sweet new option uh, hidden in the project settings. Switch on physics slash common physics slash physics interpolation. And Google will now automatically interpolate objects on rendered frames so they look super smooth. So if you're rendering at a much different frame rate than your physics simulation, uh, this should smooth out the difference between the two. Uh, fixed time step interpolation is 3D only for now, but watch this space as they plan to add it for 2D as well in the future. And the occluder shape polygon for 3D. Um, Longelly now brings us a more adaptable and easy way to add 
basic occlusion calling in the form of the occluder shape polygon. An occluder node to your scene and choose to create an occluder shape polygon. This should show up initially as a quad. Uh, you can move the polygon with the node transform, drag the corners to reshape it, add, uh, delete the add delete points, uh, anything behind the polygon will be called from view. So basically occlusion calling is telling the renderer what not to render. Good for performance in general, and now you can use basic polygons to do so. Obviously we now have the Android editor. I showed you that in action early on. Uh, this was development of a couple people, not part of the core team. Uh, so this was uh, between Freda and I know there were other people involved, but basically uh, this, oh, so we've also got Dan Edwards and Peter, or yeah, Peter Magyar, uh, all contributed to this. We've also got, again, the fix to the low power mode and add push, pull, fetch, and improve diff view to the uh, version control system UI, and then a bunch of smaller changes. So there's actually quite a bit in this release. It's nice to see more and more of the stuff from Godot 4 being backported. Uh, we also got a bit of an update on that. They expect to release a Godot 4 beta mid-year and hopefully have Godot 4 out by the end of this year, and it will have OpenGL ES3. So that's definitely something people have been waiting to hear. So ladies and gentlemen, that is it. That is uh, Godot 3.5 beta 3 and Godot now runs the editor and all on Android, which is actually kind of cool because if you want to do your development, build, test everything directly on your device, you can do so. Uh, so let me know what you think. Comments down below and I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.